So you've created a project that you'd like to share with the world and you'd like to publish this to a web server somewhere. To publish your file, you're going to go to the file menu and there's a publish settings. And there's various ways that you can publish your creation. One is to publish it as a .swf file and use an HTML wrapper. So you're calling an HTML file that will load that SWF published flash file into a web page. Other options are you can publish it to a Windows projector or a Mac projector and it creates an EXE that you could distribute then on a CD or DVD or actually even email to somebody if they can accept an EXE file. And they can play your, your project on locally on their computer. But in most cases, probably we're going to publish this to a web server somewhere. So I'm going to use Flash HTML wrapper and I can then click publish or I can come back to the file menu system and choose publish here. The result of that is I get a moon.html and a moon.swf so that was the name of my file was moon and I would take those two files and I would upload those to my web space and then anybody in the world can load the moon.html and they're going to get my flash documentation. Now there's one issue and that is I've got a bunch of graphics in here and when I play this locally, when I test my movie, it loads really fast. And I can come through and look at these different images. And life looks great. But when I publish this to a web file, because of these images are fairly large, it creates a larger bandwidth that's required to download this. And the result is, depending on my connection speed, it can be a little slow to bring this file down to my browser. Let me demonstrate that. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my web space that has this moon file. And let's watch how long it takes to download. And I've got a fairly fast connection. So about five seconds have elapsed. Ten seconds have elapsed, and at this point, if I'm a user somewhere out there in the web world, I may have considered this link doesn't work or it's way too slow, and I've moved on, and I've missed your content. And still no content, and there it is. And so now I'm running this in my browser. It's coming down from my web server, which resides in another state, but I have access now to my flash file. Now, if this is cached into my browser, next time I come back, it'll load pretty quickly until I clear the cache or clear the temporary files of my browser. So we want to look at a better way to do this, that if we're going to put this on the net, we want to have something called a preloader that will show the user that we're actually downloading the file and the amount of progress we've had so far in downloading this entire file. That might keep your user waiting a little bit longer before they move on. So I'm going to go back to Flash. And let me show you first how we can simulate this. I'm going to go to the control menu and test my movie again. But under the view menu, there is an option for bandwidth profiler. I'm going to open that up. And I can see now the size of each frame. I only have one frame in this application. More importantly, I can go to the view menu and choose download settings. I can simulate a download speed. So most people are probably using DSL. Uh, if you use 56K, that's going to be the old dial-up connection. Um, but most people are using DSL or something a little bit faster. So I'm going to simulate DSL. That's probably going to be the majority of my users. And then I'm going to click Simulate Download. And let's watch how long it takes for this to download in the simulation. So I have a blank page. I can see the progress that's happening here, 50% loaded. And it took 21.3 seconds for this to download in the simulation. And that's really unacceptable to have a blank page for 20 seconds. 
So I'm going to use a preloader to show the progress of this being downloaded. We've been working in scene one in all of our applications so far with just one scene in our project. We're going to have multiple scenes. And I'm going to bring up the scene panel. And you can get there from other panels, choosing scene. And I'm going to add a new scene. I'm going to call this scene preloader. And I'm going to make this the first scene in the list by dragging up in the scene panel. So it's going to load the preloader first before it loads scene one when we run this application. Now I don't expect you to understand all the coding that's going to happen here in this class. We get into this in the second uh, flash course. We focus on action script. I'm just going to go ahead and build this preloader. In fact, I'm going to copy this preloader from another instance. So I've got another application here that has two scenes. I'm going to go into that scene. I'm just going to copy all of this, and then I'll explain what's happening. So I'm going to copy these frames. I'm going to go back to my project. And I've got a blank frame here, blank keyframe, in my preloader scene. So I can look at cookie crumbs and see where I'm at. I'm going to paste frames. So there's my preloader. Let me explain what's happening here. I'm going to unlock all these frames. I'm going to burrow down into my movie clip. And this movie clip is 24 frame animation of a ball going around in this circular track. So I want something moving in my preloader that lets the user know that something is happening. It has The computer hasn't locked up. That's the function of that. There is also a dynamic text field here that's going to show the percentage of the application has been loaded into memory. And then finally, I have a little progress bar that's going to demonstrate that same percentage, but visually. And it, I have a red shape back here. That's my layer 4. There's my shape. And then I have a mask. It's just a rectangle. And I'm going to change the width of that rectangle through code so that in the end, when it's 100%, this will be 400 pixels wide. Here is the code that executes this. So my project of this has, a, has an object called loader info that's built into it. I'm going to add an event listener to it that looks at the progress. So as my project is loading, this progress event.progress is going to call this function. All it does is there's a variable called percent. I'm going to take the number of bytes that have been loaded, multiply that by 100, and divide it by the total bytes of the project. That will give me a percent. So at when the project's half loaded, percent is going to equal 50. When it's fully loaded, it'll equal 100. I'm going to show that value, string dot percent, plus I'm going to add a percent sign to it. I'm going to display that in my dynamic text box. And then that progress bar, I'm going to set the width of my progress bar movie clip, underscore MC. I'm going to set the width to whatever that percent value is times 4. It goes from 0 to 400 pixels, so at 100%, it's going to be 400 pixels wide. That is a mask, and so what's going to happen is as that mask moves, or as it increases, it's going to display that red box underneath it. When everything is fully loaded, I've got another function here that is going to and stopping on frame 1, of scene one, and that goes to my application. Let me just test this. Now, when I just load this locally, we won't see the preloader because it loads it so fast, it basically just goes straight to scene one. So, let me again demonstrate a simulation download, and again, I'm going to sim simulate a DSL connection. So, as we do the download, before we just got a blank page, now it's going to load that preloader and it's going to show the user a percentage that's being loaded. So it lets them know basically to wait and they can basically have a judge of how long it's going to take for this to load. When it gets to 100% then we'll see our application pop up. And there we go and it is functional. That's the advantage of a preloader is letting your user know that things are being loaded and for them to wait.